Good morning, everyone. Today, we're gonna to do a check-in of all the pots that we've got in the garden. We haven't done that for a while, probably not since the last apartment that we lived in. So we're just gonna see how they're doing and probably do a few planty plant chores along the way. Just gonna rip it out. So we're heading into the latter part of March now. The days are still quite warm, but the mornings are starting to get really, really cool. It is making it a little bit more bearable to be outside and to do some gardening, which is great. We're gonna start over here with this bougainvillea. Look at all of these new leaves, like this flush of red that is happening right here. I am probably gonna remove the old leaves. So this is old and this is new, old and new. I do have plans of bonsaiing this into something that is a little bit more tree-like and recently I took out a whole bunch of succulents that were um, underplanted in this pot here and it seems to be doing pretty well like we just got this sudden flush of growth right up here which is just beautiful. I have left this Echeveria painted lady in here for the meantime. It is happy but I am eventually going to take that out and place it somewhere else. I just don't know where yet and also these Echeveria elegans will probably come out and that'll just allow for the bougainvillea to you know take up space in the pot and do what it needs to do without competing with any other plants. There is a little bit of new growth around here. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see, but there is just a little bit of new growth here. I am gonna chop this off because I do wanna bonsai this like a tree. And so I want all the energy to kind of go towards the top of the plant. I have plans for other bougainvillea to, to do their natural trellising thing in other places. So I kind of want this one to be a bit of an experiment. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna do for now. Ultimately, I kind of want this to look like a multi-liter tree. So there's not just one trunk, but you know, it's kind of like gone like that a little bit. I've just taken off most of the spent blooms. And in fact, with bougainvillea, the red, the, these red things that you're seeing are not the actual blooms themselves. These leaves here, they're called bracts and the flowers are actually inside of that. I don't know, it's all magic. It's all magic. This yucca is doing all right. Just probably needs a bit of a clean up. This is just a pastry brush from Woolworths. I don't know what happened here. Some of the leaves have rotted off. But the thing is, the center of the plant still looks okay. Oh God, that's so mushy. I might actually pull this out. Should I pull this out? No. This to me feels like it's gonna be okay because the leaves that were affected were around the bottom here. Oh God, that's so gross. That's like a mushy. There we go. Yuck. Let's just see what happens with this, if it grows out. If not, it's not a strong enough plant to live in my garden. I don't have time for it. You know what? From afar, this mandevilla looks like it's doing pretty great, but look at what I just found. Mealy. And mealy. Oh, wow. What is going on here? Are mandevillas mealy attractors? This is ridiculous. Ridiculous. This has mealy all over it. You know what's really interesting is that nothing else in my garden has mealy. Maybe they're all just hanging out on this plant. Anyway, that's not encouraging and it's actually really kind of annoying. Otherwise, I would have thought that it's doing well. I mean, look at look at how it's kind of vining up this trellis, this lattice here. Boo. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna have to treat that. So this here is 100% isopropyl alcohol. I don't dilute it when I'm spot treating, but I do dilute it when I'm spraying the whole plant. And I'm not gonna spray the whole plant because um, it's not that infested yet. Okay, so I've gotten the really visible bugs, but I am probably gonna have to spray this down as a preventative measure. That's just so annoying. I haven't seen, this is the first plant I've seen in the whole garden that has bugs on it. Pickle is doing pretty well. I don't know what these are. Does that mean we're gonna get flower buds soon? I hope so. This one we call Gwen and she's doing pretty well. One really tall and stalky Fred Ives, which is actually really funny because whenever I see these in other people's gardens, they've got them by the droves, but 
yeah, we've just got one in this pot here. This here is Echeveria Scion, which was looking so much better before summer. And look, that's fairly dried up, isn't it? I'm gonna have to fix this pot. I shan't be doing it now, but I will fix it in time. Mm. Ow! Some old bougainvillea leaves here. Just be careful, that's really bloody spiky, this one. I don't know what's going on with this gray ghost here, why it's not growing. This one seems to be doing fairly well, but this one, Mm -mm. Don't know if it's lacking this pot. All of these Sedevaria Letitias here are looking very green. I love when they redden up. I think winter is their time to redden up, so we'll see if the cooler weather brings any change to this plant here. Aloes are looking pretty good, and the copper spoons back there, I do kind of want them to grow a little bit taller. They're taking their time, let me tell you. This one at the back here is so small. Mm, I do love this pot here. We have a blue Blue Barrel, Echeveria Polydonis, some Bronze Delights, Echeveria Bluebird. Eche this Echeveria, I swear, is one of the strongest plants in my garden. And it looks amazing, doesn't it? You've got a mama and a baby, but I, I think these might be two separate plants. Maybe, maybe, maybe. And then around here, there's a clump of Astrophytum that are just kind of like very tight knit together. We just had this flower. I completely missed it because I just wasn't paying attention. So we'll very patiently wait for that to happen one day again. This is a pot of color here. And these Sedum Adolphi at the back, they did really well. Look at that. Uh, look at Thing. We call this cactus Thing. Poor Thing has just been beaten up by the summer. I don't know why it's not doing so well, like why it got this destroyed, but it does have some babies. Let me see if I can just turn this around. Yeah, there are some babies, like right there. We're just gonna let that do its thing for a little while. We're gonna let Thing do their thing. Euphorbia snowflake right here. I really wanna put this in the ground. I need this plant to grow bigger. It's one of my favorites in the garden. So I definitely will need to find a spot for it in one of the garden beds that we've made up. I just don't know where yet. Oh look, this is the, <laughs> this is the hot and tot bread. How wild is this, huh? Like a something edulis hot and tot bread. Fokia edulis hot and tot bread. This thing here. Ooh. This one here, Euphorbia suedo globosa. I don't know if it's meant to look like that. I'll have to look it up. It looks a little bit dry to me, like it needs more water, but you know, we'll see. Ooh, our ivory curls. This is one that we bought from Cactus Country in Victoria. Where's my brush? There are a few dead leaves that need a little bit of chopping off down the bottom. And look, it's growing a little baby. That's pretty cute. What I'm gonna do, I'm probably gonna cut this leaf off you can see that it's kind of like the baby's trying to push through this dead leaf here so what I might do is just chop this off and that'll give the baby more room to grow <sighs> wow this is tough there we go this again here is also one of my favorite pots. I've just crammed so much into this one. These crassula are about to bloom, which I'm actually not happy with. I don't really love crassula blooms and it just means that, you know, the ends don't look really fabulous for a little while, but I do love this plant because of the shape and the way that it kind of, you know, trails and then comes back up again. And it's starting to knit together very nicely with the Plectranthus, I think it is. This has beautiful purple blooms in, um, I don't know what time of year, but it looks really, really pretty against all of these succulents here. Hiding in the back is an old man cactus. I do have some dreams of this growing a little bit taller and it is getting taller very, very slowly, just so it can pop up above the other plants, if that makes sense. The only problem is cacti are a lot slower growing than all of the other succulents. So we're just gonna have to be patient with that. It's this one, I keep forgetting the name of this one. 
Mammillaria celestiana cel celsiana. Very cute. It's got some blooms that are popping through there. And this Adolphi firestorm, Sedum Adolphi firestorm. Just look at the color on that. Like, what even is that? This here is an Echeveria kissing, one of my all time favorite Echeverias. Apart from the bluebird, I also love this for its color. It did get a little bit wrecked by the summer. I'm not going to lie. We're just going to have to be patient while that recovers. And look at this agave potatorum and all the billions of babies around that. Can you see that? How magnificent is that? I can't remember what this cactus is here. So I'm sorry, I don't know the name. But yeah, one of my favorite planters ever. I don't think there's much that I need to do with this planter except maintain it so it just keeps looking beautiful as it is all year round. And then we get to this planter here, which is... I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but it is another one of my favorites. I do love the combination of the plants in here. This is an Echeveria kissing. Now, you may remember if you've been hanging around this long that I did chop off the top of this in, I think it was October or November. And I've got little baby plantlets, which are just so precious look at that there's one two three babies at the moment so i'm gonna leave this as it is at the moment and just watch how it grows maybe i'll separate them in the future and pop them you know amongst other arrangements as cuttings but for now these are just going to stay as they are i've got aeonium sunburst here along with two euphorbia so euphorbia milii this one here and i think this is a euphorbia polygona which hasn't produced any offset but you know I think it still looks pretty amazing. The color combination of this pot just makes me so happy. I mean, look at it. I do get a lot of questions about mixing summer dormant with winter dormant plants. So here the Euphorbia are summer growers, so they're winter dormant, and Aeoniums are winter growers and they are summer dormant. Supposedly they do have different watering needs. I've found them to be really fine. I find Aeonium sunburst to be one of the tougher of the Aeonium types. It's gotten a little bit of sunburn from the summer sun. Apart from that, I'm really really okay with how this looks. The crest has probably suffered the most back here. Like you can see the crest that's hiding there. People are usually very quick to point out, oh, you've mixed these two plants together and they've got different watering, watering needs. I was very aware of like the dormancy periods of these two different plants when I put this pot together. I didn't care. I loved the color combination of it. The Aeonium Sunburst is still going strong and these Euphorbia are still gonna be fine as we go into winter. I'm not too worried about it. I think that, you know, I think it's looking fairly good for being in a pot together like this. It seems to have worked for me. If it doesn't work for you, then don't plant Aeonium Sunburst next to Euphorbia, but I'm just showing you what I do. So there you go. This is really struggling, so I am probably gonna pull this one out of this pot. Otherwise, I think everything's looking pretty good. Ooh, here we have a, I actually don't remember the name of this. Tim's way better with the name, so I'm gonna ask him and then pop the name for you up on the screen. But look what's happening. We got a little baby, it looks like a bunny's tail. So cute, so, so cute. Anyway, that's just doing gloriously. It's continuing to grow and it's growing another baby. What more could you ask for? All right, moving on to other planters. Um, I've forgotten the name of this succulent here, and I've also forgotten the name of this succulent here. This one is an Echeveria Tomorrowland. This whole pot here doesn't look like it's doing so well. No, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. Got a Euphorbia, what is this? Euphorbia Nesmanii, look at this, look at it. It's beautiful, what the heck? And tiny flowers at the top as well. We have a Crassula ovata. The leaves on this are just a little bit different. They're a lot smaller to your regular jade plant and they redden up really beautifully. Again, this is just like another little bonsai experiment that I just wanted to try out and it's in a very pretty pot as well but yeah we're, i'm just watching to see how this grows i would love like a massive one of these like a massively bonsai one of those but you know that's going to cost some dollars so i think we'll stick with this for the next little while then we have this aloe let's see if i can pull this off no not coming off not coming off without a fight oh never mind then underplanted with echeveria elegans one of my faves and a great clumper a great great clumper if you want something to spread fairly quickly that is of this color go for echeveria very elegant. I don't know if you can see that, but here we have the Dahlia that I potted up recently. I do need to deadhead it because the flowers are going, but I think it's doing pretty well. We've got some new growth like 
here. The leaves are dripping a little bit, so it looks like it needs some water. I actually haven't watered this in a, in a bit. So time to take care of that plant. And then around here, we have a Matillo cactus. This could do with a little bit of a brush as well. Hold on. As you can see, it got a little bit sunburn there. We actually have another Matillo cactus that got even more sunburn, which I will show you in a bit. The sun was so strong this summer. It's such a shame that it got the plants like this. These rainbows are doing good. And um, are these astrophytons? These are astrophytons. Yeah, the astrophytums are growing a little too big for this rock here at the moment. And these are just, these have like shot up completely. They've grown a lot since I've put them in this pot, which is always very encouraging to see. Here we have our Euphorbia trigona rubra, which isn't rubraing too much at the moment. You can see that it's fairly green, not red, which is always disappointing. <laughs> I mean, the leaves are red. When this plant was a lot smaller and younger, these stems here used to be a beautiful red color. I'll see if I can find a picture of it and pop it up on, on the screen for you there. Otherwise, it's thriving pretty well. There's like, you know, little offshoots like this and like this popping off all the time. And here we have this beautiful Euphorbia millii here with these beautiful coral colored flowers. Look at that. And we've come to the Russell pot here. This is Russell, the Trichocerus something or other. There used to be a whole bunch of seed and bronze delight that I've pulled out and I've just popped into the other, in, into one of the garden beds over there. I'm probably gonna do the same with this Kalanchoe, this, this Kalanchoe panda ears. It's a beautiful silvery color and I understand that these do really well in shade. So we might pop it over into a third garden bed, which gets a lot of shade. It looks like it's doing pretty happy here but yeah we might pull this out let Russell have the pot to himself so so the roots can grow, grow really healthily this doesn't look like it's doing so well oh my gosh yeah that's just sitting this was a pack of phytum pack of pack of area a pack of area or pet maybe I'll give it some hydrotherapy or I'll pot it up into its own pot and and water thoroughly because it looks very very thirsty you can see from those wrinkled leaves right there and these two cacti steno something steno cactus and this is a tephro cactus of some sort both of these will probably come out and we'll just place them in other pots that's what we're gonna do now that we've got like a whole garden over there I'm much more interested in keeping pots as specimen pots. So on my balcony, because there wasn't any kind of like land, I was treating planters like this as garden beds. And so kind of like, you know, all of my planters had arrangements in them. I crammed lots of different plants into them. None of the cacti were, were you know, kind of like specimen plants. But now that I've got more room to spread out, we have more opportunity to kind of like just have cacti sitting by themselves in a pot without overcrowding it with more succulents like this. Oh, that's our Euphorbia engines growing in the back there. Look at that. It's doing pretty happy sitting in its own pot there doing well. Here we have our Parodia Lenning Halcei. Now we did just have a round of blooms pop out on this as you can see here. These are spent blooms and we've got spent blooms here but like this this thing just flowers all the time and when it flowers it puts on a pretty spectacular show. There's a whole ton of babies just kind of like sitting around in there. Oh wow what is this? Wow it's like fully attached itself. Okay, Ugh, it's stuck in there. Okay, let me deal with that later. I'm not gonna do that now while I'm holding a camera. We just bought this as well. A fairly decently sized agave Americana with a whole ton of pups around it. That's gonna go into a garden bed somewhere in an arrangement because I want to see one of these grow really, really big. Here we have just some cacti sitting pretty and they're all very happy campers where they are. Opuntia Burbank. So this hasn't really given us any new paddles this season, which is really odd. I'm wondering if it's just to do with it being crammed into a small pot like this. That could be it. And in which case I want to see it in the ground. So I, I, I do want to see this one flourish because Opuntia Burbank is, is beautiful. Like when it grows large, uh, and, and matures it develops this very um, gray green color I just think it would look really really nice kind of like in, in giant mature form I've been looking at 
giant Opunji Burbanks on, on Facebook Marketplace as well, but that's just more money to spend and um, we just can't really afford that right now. What have we got here? We have, okay, a pot with, I'm constantly forgetting the name of this beautiful blue columna cactus. I shall be popping it on the screen for you. Here we have Echeveria polydonis, which is just doing so well here. It is getting crammed up against this, um, this hybrid aloe or this gaster aloe. I, I kind of don't really know exactly what this is, but originally this was orange and now it's turning green and um, that's just not my preference for this plant. So I don't know, maybe I, I feel like I need to stress this aloe out a little bit more. Around the side here we have some cacti and we also have Echeveria molasso. These are doing really well and have bounced back from being completely dehydrated in another pot. So I'm pretty happy with those. Um, again, I've got an Aeonium mixed into a cacti pot, which, you know, is sacrilege apparently, but it is doing pretty well. I will be pulling this out of this pot though and popping it into a much shadier spot. I'm planning to put more of my Aeoniums in the ground now that we're heading into the cooler months, just so they have full growth potential as we're going into autumn and into early winter as well. But one of my goals is to pop a Pink Witch and Aeonium Medusa as well in the ground because I love the colors of those. I wanna see them grow, I wanna see them flourish. All right, yep, and we've got this pot here. Yeah, not much to say about this one, I guess this is a, what do you call it? What is the name of it? This is a, the name has just escaped my head. What the heck? Pringly Eye. Oh my lord, Pringly Eye. This one here is a Pringly Eye and I have underplanted it with a quadricolor, agave quadricolor, which is not pupping. Apparently this pups like crazy and it's just not doing it, probably because it's in a pot. I will give it that. There's an Argovoides, an Echeveria Elegans, some Purple Delights and a Acrasula, what do you call this? Shrex ears, uh, which I thought would turn red in the sun and it's just not, it's just not turning red. You can probably tell by now that I love my suck to be super colorful. Okay, here is a tragedy. This one is a shocking mess. I've pulled, what did I pull out of here? I think I pulled the Echeveria chroma out of this one to place in one of the new garden beds. And I just didn't, I didn't put this back properly because I'm lazy. I'm super, super lazy. This one is utterly dead. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull this out. Oh, let's get this out of there. Yes, wow, that's, that's terrible. I don't even remember what this was. Honestly, a little bit sad that this has died off. This beautiful crest, I think it was um, this plant here. It's a gorgeous plant. It's like a Minima cross laulensis or something like that. And it's it's a really beautiful mix of like blue and pink. I really want to save this plant. So this plant was this plant as well. And it looks very pretty, but it just didn't survive the summer sun. Oh, there's just a little bit of life in there that you can see. These Euphorbia obesa, wow. They they got hammered by the summer sun. That looks terrible. All right, so I'm gonna move those to another spot. Yeah, this hasn't grown at all. I'll put this out of its misery. But look at this Argovoides here. It's like multiplying. Like what the heck happened? Dead leaves do need to come out. Yikes. Just give that a little bit more room to grow, but like I'm, I'm shocked that this Echeveria is producing babies like this and that many as well. Far out. Um, I think this is an alligator. Alligator, isn't that fun? It's got a little baby. In fact, it's got a few little babies. Ooh. Again, this is one that will probably do a lot better in the shade. So, you know, there might be a spot for that in just somewhere else. Shame about this. These are just cuttings that I got. Oh, there's a root. There's a root growing. These are just cuttings from like um, plant nail that I got. And it's got, there's roots growing already. So that's fun. I'm just gonna pop that back in here. That is also plant mail. This poor pot, I'm gonna have to do something with this. Look, there's so many plants here. I'm just gonna sweep over this plant shelf here. There's just so many things. If I point out each and every single plant, we're gonna be here for decades. This is one of my favorites, however. Euphorbia valida. Look, look at the patterns on that. Isn't that amazing? I like tiger stripes. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And also, this is about to bloom. This looks very poor. I should repot that and put it in some more um, moisture retaining soil because that just looks terrible. But there is a flower coming out of it, you know. Also, 
check this out. This is a copia poa. Isn't that so pretty? Okay, lots of euphorbia here. Lots and lots of euphorbia. This is one of my favorites. Euphorbia Green Way EI. Just look at the patterns on that. It's like mathematics or something. This one here is a Euphorbia bayoensis. I just love the structure of these types of Euphorbia. They look so weird and alien. This one here is a Monodenium rictii. Ah, I love it. It looks so stumpy. And here, this is another Euphorbia. What is the name for this? Tell me there's a name. No, there's no name. Uh, I think this one is called the Miniature Saguaro. And look, there's like little, little arms, little babies that are just kind of like growing off it all over the shop. This one's pretty great too and in a really beautiful pot. I love it so much. Monodenium stapeloides. Another weird alien looking thing. I've got a few rainbow cacti here, which I always love. I think this is an ivory curl baby. And this one is a uh, agave mediopicta alba. And this one is an agave dragon toes pup. So we've got all the little pups here. What's this one? Mangave Tooth Fairy, the only mangave that we own. You might remember this. This is a rainbow cactus. Uh, and just before we moved out of the apartment, I chopped this at the base to see if it had rotted and it hadn't. So now I'm waiting for little offsets to come off of this. And we're just gonna be super patient and see if we get little babies. So here we have another shelf of collector plants. Some of my faves at the moment are this um, Micro Opuntia Pygmia. Look at that. So freaking fun. A little bit dehydrated at the bottom there, but what can you do? The new growth is growing super well, as you can see. This agave, I have forgotten the name of this agave, but look at, look at the pups just coming through there. It's very sweet. There's something very Game of Thronesy about this plant. Like, look at it. It looks very, um, very dangerous. <sighs> if we come down here to this planter, this is all doing pretty well. This um, Mammalaria is growing. It's like a, a crest in a crest. I did call this cactus a bull sack. It's like a triple bull sack now. We're just going to let this Mammalaria do its own thing. This Bossacana is producing a lot of babies like look at that very sadly this ben Battis, so this is this is all like ben Battis here there was a big ben Battis here in the middle and it just rotted and i've just left the babies like this and they're kind of doing really really well ruby slippers which doesn't look very ruby at all needs some deadheading its flowers are well spent. I would love for this to go in the ground. I bought this plant years ago and it's not really done anything apart from like just kind of hang on to these three stems here. So I do want to see if this can go in the ground and if it bushes out because I love ruby slippers and you can't find it anywhere else in Australia. I got this on Etsy and I mean, it was sold to me as a ruby slippers. Whether it is or not, I have been questioning for a while. I can't find ruby slippers anywhere else anywhere else in Australia. So it is a little bit odd that this was like the only one and it just, it isn't growing like a ruby slippers at all. Cotyledon orbiculata higginsii. I want this to, to have more room to grow as well. Echeveria bee's knees and these are doing pretty well. I might pull these out and pop them in an arrangement somewhere in the ground just so this can multiply because I do love this plant and it's pretty hardy. I've forgotten the name of it. Echeveria minima cross something else. I'll, I'll have to look it up. These cacti are doing really, really well. All right, I took a really big break today. It was just starting to get a bit too hot in the middle of the day and um, yeah, I didn't like it. Where did I leave off? I think I hadn't shown you this planter right here. This plant is doing pretty well. This euphorbia, is it euphorbia? Anoplia, Anoplia, Euphorbia Anoplia is just going wild. I mean, look at all of this. Look how many babies this has. And then around at the back, you know what would be amazing is if it just took over this entire pot right here. I was thinking of moving this one over to the garden bed just because it's, it's so fluffy and pretty. I'd take out this Crassula as well. This turns a really beautiful yellow. I think it might be Crassula Argentea. These here are Echeveria Violet Queens. I cannot wait for winter. These color up so beautifully with colder weather. They turn like a very, like a bluey pink color. It's 
just divine, one of my faves. I say that about every plant, but you know, every plant is my favorite plant. And then we've got this agave Kisho Khan here as well. Yeah, so having planters that are all arrangements of different kinds of plants, it just looks really busy when you kind of like put them all together in a courtyard or a garden setting. Like I said before, I was a little bit more motivated to do that on my balcony because I didn't have the opportunity or the space on the ground to really play around with different arrangements. But now that I do and I can like do an arrangement in a garden, in bed, I feel like these little pots can become more statement pieces in a courtyard. Like I'll still have little planters and arrangements and things like that, but you know, I think it's all about balance. Oh yeah, here is the Matillo cactus that I mentioned earlier that got a lot of sunburn. We think it's sunburn as opposed to, um, I don't know, some kind of like virus or anything because the marks really haven't moved. It's not like it's spreading and they appeared after a really hot day. So unfortunate. Look at that. We'll just have to wait for all of this to grow taller so that this becomes nothing. All right, what have we got over here? Opuntia erinacea that needs some weeding desperately. And I would like to take these Echeveria out. I think it's Echeveria multicaulis. This just doesn't look very healthy at the moment. So I'm gonna pull it out and pop this plant somewhere else. Uh, let's move over to this garden bed right here. So we're still, look, I've, it's just gonna take some time for these plants to fill out and maybe things will move around. Uh, I might introduce new plants. I might swap some plants out, but for now, this is, this is what's going on here. So nicely coloring up. I'm wondering if I chop these back because this is starting to kind of like grow up against the rock. So if I chop these back and then just kind of like reset them, so this bush becomes a little bit more full, I guess. And when I cut these, we'll have opportunities for more plantlets to grow. That's what I'm thinking about. Yes, look at this. She's about to pop any day now. Even the Senecio chalk sticks are blooming at the moment. I still haven't put these anywhere in the ground. I'm not really feeling any kind of like impulse for where they can go. I've got these ones in the ground, but these ones that are a little bit bigger, I don't know. I might see if they can go in a different spot. Echeveria blue metal is coloring up really nicely. The Echeveria polydonis, this little crusty clump here, whatever you call it, that's doing really well. Lavender sitting pretty. And this Crassula radicans here is swinging between red and green. This is gonna color up with cold really, really nicely. We've got a Fred Ives crest here. I don't, I really just do not know what to do with this. I got this uh, at a nursery for $5. Yes, I don't know where to put this. Maybe in a pot. I just, I've just been so lazy with this one. I'm just gonna leave that there. Oh, I really, really need to deadhead this echinacea. All the blooms are spent. There are no new buds on this, so I need to cut it back hard so that, you know, there's opportunity for more things to grow. Or this might be it for the season. I have no idea. I've never worked with echinacea before. If I cut it back, is that is that it until next spring? Who knows? Anyway, I've got to do this right now. So just give me a moment. I am probably going to cut these all the way, pretty much all the way down to the base. All of the blooms are spent on each stalk and there are no new buds anywhere. So that's kind of sad. I, I put this here so that um, there could be flowers right next to this thing. But anyway, just have to wait for next season. Oh. Yeah, there was a new stalk forming there. Oops. Can we be more careful next time? Oh, here we go. There's a new one blooming here. So we're just gonna chop right above it. Good Lord, this is tricksy. <laughs> and sad, I'm getting rid of everything. I think I can probably cut back there. Well, that's a bit sad. Wow, I am so freaking clueless. Uh, okay, well, that's that. Look at this, all dead right there. All right, well, Tim and I, are gonna go to Bunnings right now. And then we're hoping to be able to pick up a plant from Facebook Marketplace tomorrow, and then maybe make another trip to the nursery. So we'll see you then. Hey all, this is actually the end of the video. I did end up getting more plants and I've been messing around with the garden beds again, but this video was getting too long. So you're just gonna have to wait until the next one to see. I'm just filming this last bit and then I'm gonna export it and then upload it for you all. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.